So we have all seen these cards. The knife, the hooks, the awls, the saws, the trap parts. How well do they work? One is very much thinner than the other. Obviously, this knife one, you don't want a super flimsy knife, so absolutely understandable. However, I am curious about these hooks. You can see those hooks have quite a bit of meat, whereas these ones are pretty fine. I mean, you can see it continue to shake, where this one, it's stiff and rigid. So, will one work better than the other? Will the firmer hooks over here, will these be better off just because these ones flex and bend? We're also going to kick it up a notch. And we're going to use some of this Parapocalypse, the Ultimate Survival Cord. So this stuff has a fire starting line in it, a Kevlar line that goes to 900 degrees. Dyna X, which is a cut resistance, supposed to be good for snares, dental floss, sutures, 10 pound monofilament, and then of course your seven strands of paracord plus your outer core. So we are going to cut 10 feet off of this. We're going to link up some of the inner cords and then we're going to use five feet. My son and I are each going to have five feet of the monofilament tied on the end to our hooks and hopefully we double our odds and we show you guys some fish or we prove that these are an absolute joke and not worth having in your backpack or wallet so stay tuned and we're about to get it done hopefully okay so we've got this parapocalypse ultimate survival cord got it marked at 10 feet here Gonna give that a cut and show you guys what it looks like on the inside. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, so we have our normal paracord strands, trying to get them all over here evenly together okay so we have our seven paracord strands our jute our fishing line the red one I believe is the heat resistant Kevlar and this white one is the Dyna X let's see that one definitely cuts hard. So does that one. I'm really not certain which is which. I'll have to look it up and let you guys know. I definitely think that white one is the Dynex because that one is definitely much tougher. It seems much more abrasion, abrasion resistant and definitely looks like it would be good snare, as advertised. However, this one looks like it's braided much the same way. So I'm going to pull these out. We're going to set up our stuff for this experiment with these hooks. And we will get back to you. I will show you how I'm doing it, actually. But we'll be inside, out of the wind. Okay, so I've got a little old-fashioned drop shot rod and just tie down the first inner strand that is a five foot length Michael and I have split the seven strands of inner stuff and so we each have three ten foot pieces and a five foot piece and then five feet of fishing line. Now I'm just tying a blood knot on this. That ought to hold anything that is where we are at. Now I'll do another one. Make sure the pet hair is all out of it.
just one nice overhand knot, tag on that direction. And do the same thing with the tag end going the other direction. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You got you a knot. Now, last piece. Oh, and also, I should let everybody know, I will pull it back over. The red was the... Dynax, or the white was. Hold on, I gotta relook at it. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. Oh, that one was no good. That's why we always test them. All right, there we go. Now for the green fishing line. That is not going to work. Try the blood knot again. But I have my doubts on its ability to hold with the two different diameters and material differences. Yeah, that is not going to hold. All right, well, let me get that figured out, and I'll be back. Okay, first things first. We have the jute. We have the Kevlar. And we have the Dyna X. This is the floss, snare wire, etc. Super strong. The Kevlar is super strong, but heat resistant, hence the red. And the jute, well, that makes the red. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, what I ended up doing with this guy was two overhand loops. Focus. Two overhand loops fed together like a fly line leader. So we have these set up. Michael is winding his now. And I will show you what we are bringing. The complete tackle. Split shot. Just since we're not using a rod, it might be hard to get some distance. Some bobbers. Not using the night lights. We're not going to be out there that long. And then, of course, our two hook cards that you guys seen earlier. The thick knife one and the thin arrowhead one. So, we will see you at the lake. Alright, so here we are. Bright Lake, as you can see, designated Trout Lake. So, fingers crossed, maybe. Um, we're yet to get one. Few bass, lots of panfish. So, we figured panfish, always a great place for gear testing. Michael, show them what we're using. A stick and string, baby. Yeah, yeah. And the survival hooks. So stay tuned. Okay, so I have on the double barb and a wing it bob or whatever. No, not a wing it. Just one of the easy pulls. All right, so here goes nothing. 
so here I go. Survival hook and stick fishing. Let's see how it throws. Well, I could have used more line out. Let's get a little bit closer here. That looks a little better. Oh, and I've got a bite. He's on there. Oh yeah, he's on. Well, that answers that question. Will the survival hooks catch fish? Boom, survival hook in the mouth. Try to get this out. So everyone can see Back to the bottom with him, or her, and there is, let me pull the worm off. Double survival hook, first fish, right off the bat no misses so first impression is is it worth having is it worth having in your backpack survival bag as a just in case so far i'd definitely say yeah Let's see if we can land number two Too bad it's not squirrel season because this sparrow is itching to take me a gray squirrel with it. Back to fishing. You didn't think you'd watch a video without seeing a slingshot, did you? Here we go, another good sized sunfish. Let it finish peeing. One of those guys have a fish. Well, this one is coming home with us, I do believe. I don't think that hook is gonna be able to be fetched out. These survival hooks definitely have a bite to them. Fortunately, that one was pretty deeply gill hooked so 
I am using the Dynex piece and we are making a stringer. So, already a few different good uses with the survival paracord. Hopefully it makes it. If she livens up or he livens up, we'll let it go, but I hate to release a fish just to die. So this is fish number three. Yeah, fighter man. Look at him pulling the boat. Another beautiful sunfish. And another swallowed hook. So I just broke out one of the double thicker hooks. That last fish, the hook was totally swallowed. And it did break off. I'm just using a Fisher Mittman's knot. One of the things that I do notice is due to these being cut out of flatter sheet metal it does seem to kind of scuff up the line and be rough on the monofilament but as long as you're gentle getting it down there i'm at three fish on the one hook. So that one did not end up making it. This one though, stayed on the stringer and was good. There it goes. Now I do want to point out that these two cards hooks are almost identical size. So while these ones, the thicker one from the knife, I was not able to land a fish with, I have no doubt that it would work. As long as they swallow it, you're definitely going to bring that fish in. Now, I must say, I definitely prefer this thinner card right here. These hooks, you can see by that shape, they've got a good little point and a decent little barb. Michael was able to get one up to the boat with the single one, but the single one seemed to be almost too small. Um, getting... A piece of worm on that was large enough to stay on and not get just immediately ripped off. I mean, you can see that is a relatively small hook. So there was difficulty with getting the worm to stay on. And also with this one, those thicker sides, I mean, you can see how thick that is. This one, the worms were much more difficult to maintain a good hook on. They did come off. I had several of this one right here 
where my bait was stolen. We were just using night crawlers and worms. So, I definitely think they are worth having. Definitely an item to keep in the backpack, emergency kit, survival kit, glove box, etc. Did not get to try out any of the lures or trap things. Um, you run your line through here, put a little bend in it, and the hook directly behind it, and it come, becomes a little spoon-type lure. Overall, though, the hooks, they hooked, they caught fish. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more adventures.